Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the boost. Talking about identity. Talking about how to be great. Talking about Tom Brady. Where does it come from? Right? Let's assume that we're ready to work on ourselves and we realize that what we do is not who we are. Okay. So who are we then? Right? So we're the intang intangible energy that is within everything. And so we have no idea who we are. Right? We, we only have our memory. We don't have our future. So whereas I was a football player for the past 22 years, what am I tomorrow? I don't know. So how do you bring out that energy? How do you bring out that soul? Right? That's what I want to focus on a little bit today. And I wanna I wanna jump a little bit and talk a little bit about some timeless timeless wisdom. Timeless wisdom found in the Torah, the Bible. Even though the Torah and Bible aren't the same, but whatever. So this every week we have a Torah portion. This week's Torah portion opens with a very interesting statement. And it contains, I believe, the answer to this question. God is commanding the Jewish people in the building of the tabernacle and the service that ultimately ends up in the temple that they have to go out and get pure olives, crush it, and bring a constant flame. So in the temple, then it, there was in the desert, so it wasn't, but whatever. In the temple, there was a constant flame going. So there was, there was a light that never went out. Now remember, for those who have been with me here, flame, fire, represents the soul, right? It like it reaches up, right? It has no place really in this world. It's held down by a wick, etc., etc. And so, on the surface, it sounds like a, like a pretty basic command. Like, God's like, go get olive oil and light it. I don't know. Figure it out. Crush olives. You can't order it on Amazon yet, so just crush olives. Get the oil and keep the flame burning. But in the verse, there is a concept, a line, that really stands out. And I'll say it slower for those that are, especially for the lawyers that are listening, that took legal writing. And know that when you take legal writing, they mark it up and they go unnecessary to half of the words on the page. Because for my lawyers that are watching, you know that the la worst thing that you can do when you're an associate is write too many words, right? Even now, and I've been out for a long time, when I see like too many like the, so that, you know, if there's too many of these so that the person then said the, and you shut the whole thing down, the, you know, person said, like you cut all those words out. God says, take the oils, take the, the take the uh, the olives, get oil, crushed for illumination, and burn it constantly. So if you look at the verse, you'll see that the who cares why you crush it? God wants you to crush it for illumination. When you're crushing the olives, he wants you to do it for this purpose, but who cares? You think we're, we're going to, you know, olive oil factories and being like, hey, man, why'd you crush that? Would you have in mind that we're lighting this? I don't know. It's, it's an oil press. We just crush oils. Does it matter why we crush it for? So there's a lot of different approaches here, and I want to sort of drill into one. Crushing oil, the Talmud says, is the equivalent of challenges, of suffering, of pain. An olive is a bitter fruit. The bitterness of the olive represents the bitterness, the challenge of life. When you crush it, when you go through challenges in life, what happens is what you get from it is oil. And oil leads to fire. Because challenges lead to the soul. It leads to extracting out who you are. 
you become who you are through challenge. You become who, through, who you are through adversity. If life was perfect, you would never grow. It's the challenges that we have. Hopefully they're not suffering, but they're just challenges that extract out the you inside this. In the verse, God says, I want you to know the crushing needs to be to illuminate. Because I want you to know that when you feel the challenges, the crushing, it is in order for you to illuminate. There are no challenges you go through, God says, that are not meant for you to grow from. Now, forget extreme for a minute, because when you hear principles with challenges, our brains go to the extreme. What about the Holocaust? Just forget that. Let's just stay in the principle. We talk about identity. We talk about I'm not. We talk about how the world changes. The guy leaves the college football career. The mom watches her son get married. The person retires. The world changes. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And, and there are things that are much worse. Which means that person now goes through some f- form of a challenge. That's what it means. That's how it works. The, the, the pivot, the change, the, 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 the end of is, is the challenge. That's part of the challenge is that one day you are and one day you're not. One day the market says yes, one day the market says no. One day they're little, one day they're big. right? One day you play, one day you don't play. Part of the challenge of life and what, what causes us a lot of suffering in life is that we aren't necessarily aligning the universe to our identities. I was always the tough one. I was always the smart one. I was always the most athletic. I was always the, the most religious. I was all, I, I'm that guy. Someone's replacing me. I was the one that everyone was looking for. I used to be the golden boy. I used to be the one that everybody liked. Every, I, when I walked in there, everybody looked at me, right? The change of life is what makes it, the, so much of the challenges of life is either the pain of or the anticipation of the pain of not fulfilling what the identity expects us to fulfill. I'm not going to be. It's not going to work. I'm not going to get into that place. I won't get accepted here. I was once always accepted everywhere I went. Here I'm not. We all go through it. When you're little, you're the funniest kid in the house. Especially if you're the oldest. You're the three-year-old. Everything you do is hysterical. Everybody loves whatever you say. You walk, everybody cheers. Then you get to school. And there's like a whole bunch of three-year-olds. The teacher's not so impressed. When you were little... And you're in the house, you know, and you didn't pay attention. Mom was like, whatever. You stepped all over mom. And guess what? Teacher's not handling it. And now you're in a, you're in a change. The identity. You wake up one morning. And you're like, I just can't be funny anymore. I, 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 I'm not being me. That's the challenge. There's a crushing that takes place. There's a pain in the pivot. But what makes it more painful is when it's purposeless. That's the thing. I want to nail this piece with God's help. The pain in the pivot is that it feels purposeless. I used to be, and now I'm not. Right? I, I identify with something, and that as that gets taken from me, I feel less. I feel rejected. I feel like I'm not enough. He used to always need me. They used to always want me. I used to get into everything. Everyone used to always clap. Why didn't I get picked for that? How come he got picked for that? They're overlooking me. I'm not as good as I used to be. All of it is a rejection. A purposeless rejection. There's something wrong with me. What God tells the Jewish people in a in a seemingly innocuous command, but there's no one line in that Torah that's not filled with wisdom is the way I light you up consistently is when I crush you deliberately crush for illumination and now you can use that to light an eternal lamp this by the way maybe we can talk about this maybe next week is was brought to the world as part of this from a man from, with from a man named Viktor Frankl, who 
created a uh, division in psychology called logotherapy. And in this, he speaks about purpose in the pain, meaning in pain, meaning in challenge, understanding that when you find meaning in something, that, that allows you to lift out the power that you have and overcome the challenge in front of you. Before we do that, we need to understand, before we find what the meaning is, if we can ever do that, we need to understand, and this is where faith clicks in, that we don't go through challenges that are not meant to illuminate us. We don't stop being able to do X because we're less. It's because we may be ready for different or more. If you don't have that mentality, if you don't think God crushes to illuminate, then not only do you feel the pain of the pivot, the pain of the change, since the pain is purposeless, since the pain is a rejection of you, it's really the rejection of you that hurts. Because you can care sometimes less about the, the identity, right? Many times, you know, if I took a, a, the best lawyer in the world and said, you can't be a lawyer anymore, he, it may be painful, but if I put him as in charge of, you know, the, 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 you know, the head of the, the treasury, he may be like, oh, okay, I'll do that. I mean, it's not the shift that it is, it's the rejection of the self that it is. When you believe that you do not ever go through challenges or get crushed except for illumination, and when you go through challenge, if you accept it and you, you see that it's purposeful and meaningful, and then it's illuminating your soul to shine brighter, to bring out more strength, that's when you become an eternal lamp. That's when you constantly are on fire. You don't need the world to pat you on the back. Because when they pat you on the back, you're cool. But when they don't, and when you're being challenged, you know that it's for something greater. You're being challenged for illumination. That's a whole nother level. That's the in, that's the energy within. That's how you. That's who you are when you hang up your garments at night. Parent, spouse, career, whatever. That's what's left. It's just a, just a fire. And when we should never have pain, we should never have suffering. But when we are challenged, or when we challenge ourselves, what happens is when the challenge comes to us. It's brought to us to illuminate us more. And when you see it like that, when you look at your challenges and you sit, you stare at it and you say, I'm being challenged to illuminate me more, to bring greater strength out of me, to bring greater patience out of me, to bring greater wisdom out of me. That's in the whole game changes. All right, we'll talk about it. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. With God's help, I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great weekend. Living on a lifeline. The world doesn't ever seem to change Looking for the sunshine But you're caught up in the rain It's like your eyes Are wide open but you cannot see You're watching life Pass you by like one, two, three Walking in destruction The winds of life Blur your vision All the devastation Forever feels like you're on the run It's time No one else can set you free You're locked inside and only you